What's good, everybody? This is your boy Jagging Off, the Go to Jags YouTube. Welcome to the shit list, where when you fuck up, you get aired out. You understand me? Today's recipient, my dishonorable mention, is this useless giraffe necked fuck, Mike Lennon. Now, I know people are asking me, well, Jagging Off, his stat line looked good. Why is he here? Who, who else am I going to give this shit to, bro? Like, who else could I really possibly give it to? I don't give a fuck about his stats. I've seen Blake Bortles' stats look good for years. And it didn't amount to shit other than 2017. I see, hell, even Gardner Minshew had good, good stats. But it don't mean shit in the grand scheme of things. He's on, he's, you know why he's on here? It ain't just this fucking game. It's all year. Every time this asshole is in the game, he'll do some stupid shit to cost us it. Besides the Browns game, that was the only game he, like, really played good. These last few? Nah. Like, that looking, back, looking back on it, this move alone starting him, never mind the last three years of Doug Marone being shit, this decision alone was enough for him to get fired. How does this guy... This They really said that this dude gave us the best chance to win. How he give us the best chance to win and he hasn't won a game yet? And here's and here's another mind-blowing stat for you that they played during the game. I, th I figured out the recipe for tanking. Mike Lennon, now with this year with the Jaguars, he's been on... He's been and started games on... Three different teams that have accumulated the number one overall pick. When he was in when Tampa, he st he started the year they drafted Jameis Winston number one overall. When he was in Arizona, he got he was um he was that he was there the year that the year before they drafted Kyler Murray. And now this year, he's here and the Jags are drafting Trevor Lawrence number one overall or Justin Fields, whatever the fuck they do. But that but look. Miami had it. Miami had it fucked up when they tried to tank last year. They should have. They should have made Ryan Fitzpatrick fake an injury or some bullshit, and then they could have. They could have signed him and Josh Rosen, and they wouldn't have won shit. They would have won zero and sixteen. So that's the recipe. You want to get the number one overall pick? Put, put Mike Lennon on your team and make sure he sees playing t time. You ain't because you ain't winning shit. Sorry, yes, it's like. What has he done? He's, how has he been in the league this long? Like, I don't get it. How has he been in the league this long? How have a couple teams picked him up and thought he was going to be something? Like, I don't get, like, I don't get it. And then this, and then, and you know, you know why, the, you know why he, he did so, he's getting this over everybody that played, yet played in Sunday's game. The Visca Chenault, a rookie, a second round pick rookie, Put this fucking team on his back and got us down and got us back from a twenty to nothing hole. And after he threw those two touchdowns, he did nothing. Like and people that you and people that usually ain't shit were actually doing things. Chris Conley had a very good game. Fucking even Andrew Wingard's sorry ass got a fucking pick. And then even though he was stupid as shit and cost us yardage by running that shit out of the end zone and nearly got his legs amputated by T.Y. Hilton. But after those two touchdowns, this dude didn't do shit. Oh, he, like we were down 20 to 14. All he had to do was lead one touchdown drive. And it ain't like Daryl Gumbawale was horrible that game. I mean, he had 50 yards, but it ain't like he was horrible. This team, they played their asses off and we had a chance to win. Then, like, if we'd have got the touchdown the couple times he had a chance to, then if Jonathan Taylor hits that big run, run and scores and wins the game, you know, okay, fine. We can blame the defense because that's usually what happens anyway. Like, we get, the we get the touchdown and take the lead, and then Jonathan Taylor gets the big touchdown run, okay, fine, whatever. I, I can take losing like that. But, like, after those touchdown drives, it just, what, it just went flat. Like, it just stopped. Like and another and another thing, you useless fuck. How are you six foot eight, and you having balls batted at the line of scrimmage? How many balls did we see get batted at the at the line of scrimmages? You're six foot eight. How are you hitting the line of scrimmage? How?
It, it doesn't make any fucking sense. I mean, goddamn, with Gardner Minshew, I could kind of understand it. But, but you, there's no fucking way you should be hitting the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> like, like, there's no fucking re reason at all. Unless I really missed something in this game and the Colts dug up Andre the Giants, big retarded ass, and stuck him at defensive tackle to where he could put his hands up and reach it. That's about the only way I could I could see balls getting batted down at the line of scrimmage when you're the fucking white version of Manute Bowl. Doesn't make any fucking sense, man. I swear to God. And, you know, this is one of the reasons I really feel bad for Gardner Minshew in this situation. Now... I'll concede to the fact that, you know, I was wrong about him. He's not a franchise quarterback, but at least, he, but at least he's not a statue in the pocket. At least he can get out and make some, and make some plays. This dumbass sits there and just collapses under pressure. Like he pussy. And, you know, Garner Minshew's probably going to ask for a, tra for a trade next off season. And you know what? In this case, I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. How this organization treated him was fucked up. He should have been playing. He should have been playing. Let him play himself out of a job. Don't give useless fucks like Mike Glennon a, sh a chance when you know they ain't going to be shit. Like I said, this whole decision was reason enough for Doug Maroon to get fired. Like, and even though, like, you know, the locker room's good, there's no finger pointing all that, you know they had to be, you know some of the players had to be pissed off about that decision. You know they did. But you know what? The good, the one silver lining about this is he's played shitty enough to where he's not going to get a second contract, and we're never going to see this fuck ever again. And another, and another thing. This is another stupid ass decision by Doug Marone. All these quarterbacks we tried out, you know, Gardner Minshew was meh. But Jake Luton was a fucking disgrace. Mike Glennon sucks. How did Josh Dobbs not make the fucking team? How was he the guy you cut? We gave a fifth-round pick to the Pittsburgh Steelers for him last year. And, you know, Josh, Do Josh Dobbs, I don't think is that good or anything, but he couldn't have been any worse than Luton or, or Glennon. There's no fucking way. At least he could run for his life. I mean, my God, bro, like... Whatever. It's the best way. It's the, that's the only good thing about this. We ain't got to see this piece of shit no more. Whether Minshew's the backup or whether we gotta go fucking sign somebody else, we ain't gotta do. We at least ain't gotta deal with this asshole anymore. So, because of your shitty play, Mike Glennon, because you, because your failure at being a at being a quarterback, your whole fucking career, how you've had a job this long, I have I will never fucking figure out. But because of that, you are forever on the shit list, my friend. Anyways, that's it. That's all. This your boy jagging off. Go Jags. Two vaults till I die. I'm gone.